Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. About a month or two back, a viewer of the show sponsored through the New Guitar Day program a second look at a reverend guitar. And I'm actually really excited to check this one out because it's Billy Corgan's signature. So if you're not familiar with who Billy Corgan is, you've heard his song Bullet with Butterfly Wings. He's with the Smashing Pumpkins. So hopefully that rings some bells. If not, just go ahead and check them out. They've got some good songs. But right, let's go ahead and get this thing out. Kind of an interesting pack job for a brand new buy, but <laughs> it was sourced through Guitar Center, so what did I really expect? That they would still have the original triangle boxes like we saw last time? But all right, there we go. This is significantly chunkier in person than I was expecting. This has got a good weight to it. So, this is his new Zero One series guitar. It's pretty much the same body shape as his previous two signatures, except for this time it's gotten a little bit more of what I would call a classic look to it. Let's take a look at his first two, known as the Turs and the BC-1. I'm honestly not sure which one came first. These two models had a very similar body shape, but their pickguard layout was significantly different. It was like segmented pickguards, which gave it a very interesting look, but at the same time, I could see some people maybe being turned off by that. So the Turs was a one pickup version, the BC-1, Billy Corgan 1, was a two pickup variation, and you could find a whole plethora of different colors. So just recently, they came out with this new Z-1, and we're going to notice that the pickguard has significantly changed this time. If anything, this thing seriously reminds me of a Fender Tornado. I mean, it's it's got almost the exact same body shape. It's got nearly an identical pickguard at this point. Now, obviously, some things are different. Maybe this is a little bit more stylized, but if you're looking for something similar to this for about 400 bucks, check out the Squire version. That's still in production yet today. Original Tornados are a little bit harder to find. So new pickguard, new pickups. We've got kind of like a bullseye and stars design. That's pretty fascinating. But our pickguard's still made of that aluminum, and we've got two different colors to choose from. The one we're looking at today, it's called Metallic Silver Freeze but you can also find Midnight Black, and these are $1,499 brand new in the stores, but MSRP is about $300 higher. And yes, as we saw here, no case. These are made in Korea, if I understand Reverend correctly. Yep, it tells you that right there on the headstock. However, Reverend does make guitar cases. They're just, you know, about 220 to 250, depending on what size you need. So this was a new guitar day purchase, so he decided he wanted to get a case. So let's check this out real quick. So it's kind of like the old Gibson bass style cases. Now there's other manufacturers. It's just I'm more well-versed in Gibson, but it's a two-tone teardrop. I mean, it's got the Reverend branding, which looks pretty cool. It's got that high-end smell to it. It's kind of like how Gibson has some of those vanilla scents. Oh, nice, it's TKL made. No wonder it smells similar, made in Canada even. So let's see if this one fits in here. I'm not sure what model needs this neck rest, but this definitely fits better without that. Now it's not, exactly form fitting but they only have two cases on their website so i would suggest just putting that right there and then yeah that tightens that up nicely maybe that's what that's for <laughs> but besides just being a billy corgan signature what made me want to check this thing out is most reverend guitars made today have karina bodies this one doesn't it's an alder body so it's kind of an anomaly within their current day lineup because i believe it was like around 2007 when they switched most things in their lineup to karina but just like that last one, we have a roasted maple neck on this guy. This one's definitely looking a little bit darker than our last one. And the back of the neck has got a lot of cool wood grain on this. So let's go ahead and give this Reverend guitar another shot. Let's throw it on the workbench to take a look at its individual parts and specs, and then continue on to our playing demo. Inside the Corgan signature. So this is technically a solid body alder construction. However, they do advertise it as chambered. And you can see the graphic right here on the screen. They circle this and they circle that. So when you take the pickguard off, you can see what they're talking about. So you just have an additional chamber right here. I haven't torn apart his first couple of signatures, but I'm guessing that's probably what they did very similarly to get the weight down on these instruments. However, there's something else that they didn't circle. They have an enlarged swimming pool route in here because they really just need about that much. So it's twice as big as it has to be. If you wanted to modify this and have a single coil pickup right here, you could, you just have to cut the pickguard. Now getting another humbucker within that route, that's gonna be cutting it close. It couldn't be perfectly spaced, but you might be able to butt it up against that one if you really wanted to, because that route starts about right here. The pickups are kind of interestingly constructed though. They have three pole pieces right here and then more of a rail style for the other side. They just call them the Z1 series pickups. 
these were voiced for the more heavy offerings of the Smashing Pumpkins catalog. They don't give you a whole lot of lead length to work with on these to look at it, but here's what the back of the bridge pickup looks like. Nothing too fancy. And there's the neck one. And this is a real aluminum pick guard, so it's metal, it's cold to the touch. Some guys like them, some guys don't. That's up to you. Something I didn't realize until I got this thing on the workbench is the bridge pickup has a pickup ring, whereas this one's mounted into the pick guard. So slightly different styles there. That lends to this guitar's very unique look. I'd imagine these pickups would be pretty hot. And yeah, that bridge is about 13.88k ohms. Neck position, 7.93. Then somewhere in between for our middle, 5.1. And just like our last Reverend, we do have a little bit of fancy controls that we'll have to talk about. I believe this one is our base contour knob, so you can kind of take out all the bass and almost get a single coil tone out of some of these pickups if this is anything like the last one. And I believe we've got a master volume master tone. What kind of cool little UFO style knobs on here. The all chromed out and ice blue metallic finish is really cool. There is a Les Paul Platinum that kind of looks similar to this. And then there was also like a baritone studio that had a very similar finish. But this time it's a string through, no trim system or anything. Just kind of fender in style with six saddles. Secured to the top with four screws. But moving on from our older body, we have a roasted maple neck and fretboard. You can see where the fretboard stops and the neck begins there. But we do have 22 frets. But we've got the black dots here. All the circular wood grain. It's looking pretty nice. A little bit darker in color than the last one, but that's normally how I associate roasted maple with being. But the nut's rather skinny, 1.62 inches. That increases to 2.01 by the 12th. First fret neck depth of 0.82. And that stays fairly consistent, 0.86 by the 12th, so that's a fairly skinny neck. Here's what that looks like at the 1st fret and the 12th fret. And of course we have our Reverend style headstock on here. So this is just how they do it. Whether you like it or not, that's up to you. But their string tree system's always interesting. It's a triple string tree, it just has an elongated bar right there. Your truss rod channel is routed like that, and you've got access in there. And this model features locking tuners, so that's nice. I'll show you the locking mechanisms on the back. You've got the button style tuner tips. And then for this one, they have a Z on the headstock to make it look futuristic. Now QC wise, in person, the Z, I don't know, there's like some bumps or something in it. They definitely could have did a better job of putting that on the headstock in my opinion. Another thing that I noticed QC wise is it looks like they took a little bit of a chunk out of the pocket right there. Like, does it affect the guitar at all? No, it's mainly a cosmetic thing, but it's just something I noticed when taking this one apart. Moving on to the backside with the back plate removed, here's what we've got going on. They have it all shielded off, including on the back side of the plate. It looks like we're rocking Korean made pots that are alpha branded. And there's a look at our toggle switch. Here we can see the string through ferrules. And as far as the body shape goes, you do have a little bit of a belly contour right there. And then you have just a very slight swoop on the cutaway area. It's not much, but it is there. And of course, Reverend's calling card is the six screw neck. Their pilot wing Reverend style output jack. As far as the neck goes, lots of wood grain on this one. You got a knot in the wood right there, but it looks pretty good if you're looking for a wood grainy neck. It looks like they write their serial numbers on here by hand when they check them in at Toledo, Ohio. This one was number 58122, and you get a Billy Corgan decal on here. I know it looks like a signature, but no, that's just a decal. You can actually feel it. It's a little bit proud as compared to everything else. And there's the bullseye style locking mechanisms. They just turn these to lock the string down, and then you loosen them to get the strings out. All said and done, this one weighs just a little bit under seven and a half pounds at seven pounds, 7.2 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how this one sounds. So that kind of gives you a brief idea of how these things sound. Very dynamic pickups here. I like that neck pickup, but remember, you also have that bass control down here, so you can also make it sound like this. single coil like because it takes as much bass out of the sound as it can do. 
So you can also go like halfway on that as well. Same thing's true on the middle position. You definitely get a little bit more of a volume boost when you have your bass all the way on. Now I'll try that bridge pickup. That's got a good, like, raunchy chunkiness to it. I like it. Tame that all the way down. Kind of telly-like. Now, obviously, you can also do, like, in the middle of that. Go ahead and kick some dirt on. I'll say this thing has some great lead tones with it. Both all the way bass on and off. I can see why recording guys like these guitars. You can really dial in whatever tone you're going for and just like stick with one guitar. Now that we know all about the new Billy Corgan model, what are my final thoughts on this one? In general, I like this one a lot better than my first Reverend. Maybe it just comes down to the pickups or the layout of the body, or I happen to like some of the Smashing Pumpkins discography here. <laughs> Something about this one, it's nice. I wish I could spend a little bit more time with this one because it's a lot of fun, but I gotta get it on to its rightful owner through the new Guitar Day program. So as far as tuning stability went, I thought it was pretty good. These locking tuners, they're very nice. They've got the wheels on the back. You kind of get used to the whole aesthetics of these reverends. And like, once you really dial in your tone that you want, I can see how this bass contour knob is just an invaluable tool. I could see how guys who play these things and then go to other brands, they would probably miss that because it's interesting to shape all of it. And this time I tried not to get too hung up on, you know, going back and forth or getting it dialed in, just really started to play this guitar. So. 
Reverends, they've got that going for them, if nothing else. So I would suggest at least trying one or two of these out before you fully judge them. So thank you for tuning in tonight, Troglodytes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.